Hi everyone, I'm WFAA Chief Meteorologist Pete Delkis in Dallas, Texas with your updated tropical look uh, as we head through the rest of this week. Now I want to make this a very thorough one for you, so I'm going to touch on a number of different facets of this, this next storm system as we watch. And not only that, but I'll talk about what's happening out in the entire Atlantic Basin. We have one system out here that's uh, poised for a uh, uh, development 80% uh, chance of that in the next five days. There's Bermuda, so it's just to the east of Bermuda. We have another one down here, that's Cape Verde Islands. We have another one that's uh, you know in between uh, South America and the African coast. So uh, that right now appears as though it'll stay out in the ocean, a fish storm we'll call it. Uh, we'll watch that, not very favorable for development over the next five days, but things could certainly change. Now into the Caribbean. That is the one that uh, all eyes are on right now in the United States and certainly in the the Gulf Coast part of the United States. This is poised for development as well. A little bit more about uh, this one. Uh, those are the spaghetti plots. You can see all the different models, what they're doing. I mean, this has been all over the place. It was moving. Uh, there's still one that takes it into a, a Central America, uh, but um, it's been all over the place the last few days, but it's now starting to develop a little bit of a consensus. I'll have a lot more confidence in where this is going to go once it starts to uh, clear the Yucatan Peninsula as we head into the upcoming weekend. But right now you can see it's anywhere from Texas up to uh, Louisiana and uh, Mississippi. So we will continue to uh, keep an eye on this. Possible development? Yeah, absolutely. It's extremely favorable. Looks like it will become our next name storm unless one of those out in the Atlantic does in the next 12, 24 hours or so. But if it does, and it appears as though it will, it will be called Tropical Storm Ida. That's the latest on that. European model. I showed you all of the, uh, the, 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 the kind of the swath of models there. The European, a couple of days ago, took it into the central Texas coast and right into the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Today it's taking it to the central Louisiana coast. That's the European model. It would do that on Monday. Once again, these things are going to flip flop. They're going to shift east. They're going to shift west. The timing is going to change. The intensity is certainly going to change. But this is today. It's Wednesday. We're looking at like Monday or Tuesday of next week. So a lot can happen. Do not focus on this exact track. I'm just using it as an illustration. The American model is a little farther to the west than the uh, a little farther to the west of the European. But remember, two days ago, the American model had it moving into Central America. And now the Canadian model, that's taking it into the Texas-Louisiana line. So those three models are pretty consistent. Then we have the outliers as well. So right now we are looking at some type of landfall with this system early next week. Uh, and it does appear as though it will be in the United States. Louisiana, Texas, uh, the, the jury is still out, if you will. One thing that we are certain about, those are the unknowns. These are the certainties. Look at the sea surface temperatures here. You have sea surface temperatures in the, the upper 80s, uh, and we have that all along the Texas, Louisiana coast. You're looking at uh, jet fuel for these systems to really intensify. So some rapid intensification. Once it clears the Yucatan, once it moves out of the Caribbean, the waters in the Gulf of Mexico are just high octane fuel for these systems to have that rapid intensification that we see too often. We certainly don't want to see it, but we do. Another uh, factor that we're looking at right now is wind shear. Unfortunately, it's a lack thereof. Uh, if you have the high water temperatures that we do, that heat content is there. You also would like to see a lot of shear because that could really just bust these things apart, these tropical systems. Right now, this weekend and early next week, I don't have any wind shear to speak of in the Gulf of Mexico. So the lack of wind shear also favors some rapid intensification. Now, let me show you one of the models. This is the, uh, this is the American model, and it's kind of in between the three that I just mentioned. As it moves across the, uh, as it moves across the uh, Gulf of Mexico this week, and you see how by Sunday morning it starts to intensify, we do see some type of circulation. Landfall somewhere around the central Louisiana coast. Uh, and that would mean, of course, a lot of rain. That would mean a storm surge, certainly a severe weather threat as well, and no doubt the wind threat. So that's the latest on the system in the Caribbean right now that's north of Columbia. Uh, that system most likely will become our next name storm, and at that point, it will become Tropical Storm Ida, and I do believe it will do that over the next 24 to 48 hours or so. We'll continue to watch things down in the tropics, not only in the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, but out in the tropical Atlantic. Right now, from Dallas, Texas, our Victory Park Studios, that's my latest tropical update.